Yo, 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 yo. Yo, yo. What's good with it? It's the homie Mac. Music, art, culture, knowledge. Each one teach one. Peace and love. Reporting live from the Dogon, Dogon, Dogon. You know what it is. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Thumbs up, give me the likes. Thumbs up, give me the likes. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, 82 Kings. Um, yeah, if you're watching this, make sure you're still subscribed because sometimes YouTube will unsubscribe, unbeknownst to me and you. Um, YouTube will unsubscribe you. So make sure you're still tapped in so you can get all this amazing content here at Mac TV, 82 Kings. You know what it is. Um, yeah, so this is another Mac It With Mac session book review series. Uh, today I will be reviewing the book, The Israeli-Palestinian Conflict, A Beginner's Guide to Objective Understanding Through a Fact-Based Journey from Past to Present by Peter Schwartzman. See it, see it, see it. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, um, ever since I was a shorty, one of the things, well, yeah, I've always been cognizant of uh, the conflict in the Middle East. Ever since I was, even when I was a little kid, I remember, you know, I'm an 80s baby, grew up in the 90s. One of the things I would hear people say in the 90s was, peace in the Middle East, peace in the Middle East. So I used to be thinking like, dang, like, is it, is it that much conflict going on over there? You got to say peace, peace, in the, peace in the Middle East. Um, again, I'm a Detroiter, grew up in America. This is an international um, affair. So I want to give context from my angle, my, my ecosystem, uh, how my, my introduction to the conflict. Uh, yeah, so growing up in Detroit, in the Midwest, uh, the media the media that I saw, again, was American-based. And I admit, I was indoctrinated in a lot of ways. I'm sitting here thinking, what is up with these Arab people? What is up with these Palestinians? Why are they, why are they so angry? Why are they... Because the media, the narrative that was sold to me is, you know, these uh, these these Islamic extremists, these these uh, these Arabs, uh, these Arab nations, they're 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 just so bellicose. There's so much ire. There's so much uh, contrarianism amongst them. Like you know, you get, you get these peaceful Jews that are just they're kind and they're nice and they're humble, and then you just have these uh, truculent. Violent Arabs that are blowing stuff up, strapping up bombs, blowing stuff up, and they're doing this in the name of Allah. And I just, and, and this is, I'm, I'm, I'm processing all this as a child, going into middle school, going into high school, and then even college, the narrative is sold to me. And I'm thinking like, what is up? Like, why are these Arabs so upset? <laughs> you know, um... And I and I and I realized that the the narrative that was sold to me was very much propaganda. It was very much one sided, and I used to always think, well, you know, Israel should be the Jews' land because that's the Jews are God's chosen people in the Bible. I'm a Christian, so I'm thinking to myself, you know, the Arabs are being contrarian to God. Like, let these Jews, let these Jewish people have this land. This is their. King, da they're, they're the descendants of King David, King Solomon, Jesus. Like they, that's their land. They should get that land, right? Um, until I did some more research and I realized, like, no, these, <laughs> the context that was sold to me about Arabs again was very it was propaganda. It was one sided, and this whole issue with Israel and Palestine is very multifaceted. Um, the, but let me get to this book. The thing that I like about this book is that it outlines. From, it, it outlines the significance or it, it, it outlines the significance of the land and how this land, the land that is Israel, uh, how it's nestled between um, Jordan, Syria, and Egypt, and Lebanon, and, it, and, the, and, the, and it's um, the seaboard of the Mediterranean Sea. Um, it gives me, it get, it, the book gives you a, a historical context. It talks about how this land is sacred to not only Jews, um, but it's sacred to Muslims. It's, it's, it's sacred to Muslims as well. 
uh, one of the things he consistently says in this book is th there is a, a tapestry of culture um, that's very multifaceted. It, it is it is uh, relevant to the Jews. It's relevant to, to uh, Muslims um, and followers of Islam. I didn't know the significance of Jerusalem <laughs> to Muslims. Like I did not. I wasn't aware that uh, I heard it at Aqsa Mosque, but Al -Aqsa, Al -Aqsa, well, let me slow down. Al Aqsa Mosque is in Jerusalem. Let me make sure. Let me fact. Give me one second. Let me, let me fact check myself. Um, give me one second. Where did I go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Um, yeah, this this book, I do feel like um, the one thing I do like about this book is Mr. Schwartzman. Uh, he humanizes both sides. He humanizes the Jews and he he, he humanizes the Arabs. Um, give me one. Yeah. Al-Aqsa Mosque is the third holiest site in Islam and is located on the Temple of Mount, on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. So that's significance. That's Jer Jerusalem holds significance to Muslims as well. Uh, and then it's believed that uh, according to Islam, uh, you have something called the Temple Mount, which is a hill in Jerusalem that's sacred to both Jews and Muslims. It's the site of the first and second temples in Judaism. And it's also believed that the Temple Mount is where the Prophet Muhammad ascended into heaven. So this land is of religious, spiritual, political significance to, to Muslims as well. Um, and I like how he, he talks about, he goes back into like biblical times, pre-modern times. Uh, he talks about how initially Israel was called Canaan and how, in essence, this, this land was, was very... Valuable in the sense that it was a main train, it was a it was a main uh, spot for transport and trade. You know, a lot a lot was moving in and out of Israel. At one point, he talks about just the different empires that had conquered the land. You had the Romans; they conquered it, um, among others. So there's a there's a lot of there's an add mixture of a lot of different cultures in this land. And from my understanding. Eric, well, you know, initially, this was the Jews' land. But then there were good Arabs that came in, and they felt like, you know, this is this is significant to us. This is significant to us. Um, we deserve to be here, <laughs> you know? Um, and then I, I, it's interesting because in this book, it talks about how, you know, essentially the Arabs, their, their presence in Israel got reduced to, like, Two places, uh, the Gaza Strip, which is very small, and then the West Bank. So I, you know, I can imagine. Um, well, no, I, I can't imagine. I can't even fathom it. But to go from the cultural significance of this land, how it's relevant to you, how your presence is ubiquitous on that in that in that land space, and then you just get reduced to small portions of it. Yeah, I'd be pissed off too. I mean, this is this land is significant to me, so I understand. Why Arabs felt like you know they were basically displaced. Um, I you know I, the, the Israel became a state. I want to say in forty seven or forty eight. The UN. Let me find it. Give me one second. Where is it? 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 Second. Yeah, like in 47, 48, um, the UN, yeah, here, here we go. The UN General Assembly's vote on Resolution 181 on November 29, 1947, which endorsed the partition plan, partition plan basically meaning like a two state. Uh, land for the Jews and land for the Arabs, partition plan, was a pivotal moment. The resolution passed with a two-thirds majority, sparking widespread celebration among Jews, 
but deep resentment and protest amongst Arabs. I get it. Your land, you're being reduced. You're, you have to share something that was you, you felt like was yours. Um, the, the culmination of these events came on May 14, 1948, just ahead of the official end of the British mandate. David Ben-Gurion, the head of the Jewish agency, proclaimed the establishment of the State of Israel. This declaration was met with immediate armed intervention by neighboring Arab countries and ignited the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. So yeah, it's conflict. The UN comes in. You're you're telling me essentially, I got it. You know, I have to share something that was. Like, what do you mean? This is a, this is the the state of Israel. Like, what, I was already here. Like, what, what, you kicking me out? Um, and in essence, it's equivalent to my homeboy gave me a, gave me a great um, parallel or example. He said, imagine you sharing a room. You you have you have a house. You have a house, and you allow. Um, because from my understanding, there you know when it was when Arabs inha inhabited the land and they were the main um, demographic, they weren't harassing Jews, you know they weren't treating them poorly. They they cohabited with them, but for the UN and, and a, a whole military industrial complex to come in and be like get the heck out, <laughs> I can understand how that would cause conflict. But the, again, the parallel is you're in a house. You let someone stay in your guest room, and then you look up and they're saying, hey, I should be able to share half of this house. Better yet, no, get out. I should be able to have this whole house. So yeah, I think I think there's merit for uh, the Arab contention, the, the ire that they have. I understand it. You know, um, I, when there's no room for peaceful, con when, it, when there's no room for peaceful conflict resolution, when there's no room for dialogue, violence ensues. Okay, it just is what it is. Uh, this book, it talks about uh, the Arab-Israeli War, the Yom Kippur War. Um, give me one second. There are other conflicts that it mentions. And um, one of the things that I didn't realize was how even, even amongst Arabs, they they have uh, what's the term I'm looking for? They have uh, a dichotomy that exists amongst, amongst them. They don't all agree in the same approach to dealing with Israel. Like I know you have Fatah, you have Hamas. Um, some people would classify, classify them as terrorist organizations, but uh, they don't. All, I, I think Hamas is more militant in their approach, but. Um, yeah, Hamas is an Islamist Palestinian organization with a political and a militant wing currently governing the Gaza Strip. Um, yeah, he just talks about how uh, what caused the conflict, how you had uh, UN intervention, American intervention. We've uh, tried to, uh, we as in the U.S. government, we've tried to, um, what's the term I'm looking for? Be a moderate. Um, or, or kind of serve as a yeah again a moderator that we can we can talk and try to find some type of balance or agreement between the Arabs and the Jews. Um, what else? You had something called the Camp David the Camp David Summit in two thousand, while not successful in producing a final peace agreement, underscored the deep complexities of the Israeli Palestinian conflict. Key issues such as the, state, the status of Jerusalem, the right of return for Palestinian refugees, and the determination of final borders were discussed extensively, highlight, highlighting the intricate details that any successful peace agreement would need to address. In the night, even before that, in the, in the 1990s, uh, the landscape of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict shifted with the Oslo Accords. These agreements developed in secret in Norway, culminated in the historic mutual recognition between Israel in the Palestine Liberation Organization. The iconic image of the handshake between Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin and PLO Chairman Yasser Arafat on the White House lawn symbolized a new era of peace possibilities. Then in 2007, uh, you had something called the Annapolis Conference, which was hosted by the US President George W. Bush, reignited discussions around a two-state solution. Though it brought renewed commitment to the peace process, tangible outcomes were limited, 
reflecting the ongoing challenges of translating diplomatic dialogue into concrete actions. Um, yeah, this is what I was looking for. Um, before both of those things, those things have been at Apple's conference and the Camp David Summit and Oslo Accords. In 1978, you had the Camp David Accords, which, which, brokered, which was brokered by U.S. President Jimmy Carter, marked a significant milestone in Middle East peace efforts. Although primarily an agreement between Egypt and Israel, it was, monument, it was monumental in that it represented the first peace treaty between Israel and an Arab nation. This breakthrough set a precedent for future peace negotiations, demonstrating that dip diplomacy could yield tangible results in a region often marred by conflict. Um, so yeah, I think America has, you never know with us, we, we can be, uh, <laughs> sometimes we masquerade like we have good intentions, but really we're, we, we, we wanna spread democracy and that the place we're usually trying to help give aid to, um, there's some type of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, there's some type of advantage that we get, there's some type of resource we want. So it's not always necessarily like this, this righteous intention behind helping people. Um, it is what it is. Um, even in Ukraine, like I found out that Ukraine is one of the biggest producers of like wheat. So... But that's a whole nother com that's a whole nother conversation. I don't want to get into the Ukraine uh, issue. Um, but overall, I think this is a good book. It gives a very linear timeline. It shows you how we got here. It gives historic uh, notation. Um, I feel more educated in understanding the conflict that is between Israel and Palestine. Um, myself, I, I I realized that this land, it again, it has. It's of great significance to both Jews and Arabs. So I am in favor of a two-state process where they basically, you know, they, they, they share the land. You know, there's equal distribution. You know, like people, both Arabs and Jews are allowed to thrive and cohabitate. Um, but that's, <laughs> that's probably wishful thinking of... Uh, Again, as he says in his book, the, the tapestry, there's just there's a myriad of things, there are a lot of moving parts that make this whole scenario what it is. I don't know if they're ever, I mean, clearly, um, there is no just snap your finger solution to this. It, it's, uh, it, it seems to be very cumbersome <laughs> to even to, to figure out what the solution will be ultimately. Um, the thing that I don't like is I, I feel like the Arabs are getting the short end of the stick. Even when I read, the, read this book, it, it, it felt like the aid that America gave to the Palestinians, um, it was very conditional. Um, but the aid that they give to Israel, as far as, far as uh, you got this thing called the Iron Dome. The Iron Dome is basically a, uh, it's not an actual dome or edifice. It's basically a region where there are these machines set up that intercept missiles. They don't intercept all of them, but they intercept enough of them to help sustain the land. Um, from, uh, I guess, Arab retribution or Arab violence. Forgive me if that's wrong politically to say. <laughs> but, uh, yes, yeah, basically to protect Israel, the, the Jews. Um, But let me, yeah, Iron Dome is basically an air defense system developed by Israel to intercept short-range rockets and artillery shells. Um, yeah, it's I, again. There's no, there is no quick fix to this. I think even when I'm no longer here in the physical, when we're no longer here in the physical, you, the viewer, I feel like this, <laughs> this, this conflict will still be ongoing. You know. Um, who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they'll come up with a solution tomorrow. Doubt it. But uh, yeah, Israel again. It's it's uh, you have the Western Wall, um, Al Aqsa Al Aqsa Mosque. This land is uh, even the homie Jesus was born in Nazareth, which is in Israel. Shout out to the homie J C Jesus Christ. You know what it is. Uh, even he was <laughs> he was born in Nazareth. So this land is of utmost significance. In the Abrahamic faith, specifically, you know, Islam, Christianity, um, Judaism, 
And um, I I do th this this conversation just goes in so many different directions. Uh, people, you know, people feel like certain people should have the land. They feel like either the Jews should have the land or the Arabs should have the land. I had some people to say that these aren't even the real Jews. <laughs> so it, this, this conversation can go in a lot of different directions. Um, ultimately, I am in favor of peace. Uh, let me get back to this book. I, the, I, I didn't know about this thing called Mossad. Mossad is a national intelligence agency of Israel. It is responsible for intelligence gathering, covert operations, and counterterrorism. Uh, then I found out about, in, I think it was the 72 Olympics, there were some Israeli people that were, uh, that were killed. I think it was like 11 or 12 uh, people from Israel, Jews, that were killed uh, by a terrorist organization. Um, an Arab terrorist organization. And Mossad hunted these guys down. And there was a guy named Eric El Eric Elderman. He was a, a Eric. No, Adolf. 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 What was his last? Uh, his name was Adolf, not Adolf Hitler. But this Adolf was uh, instrumental in organizing the Holocaust. Mossad hunted this dude down, fought, found him, brought him back to Israel. Um, I believe he was in Argentina. Fact check me. But the Adolf guy, they brought him back to Israel. Charged him with, with crimes against humanity, and they hung him. Um, even to this day, there are uh, Jews that hunt down Nazi uh, protagonists or nat nat Nazi sympathizers that were instrumental um, in the Holocaust. You know, so it's like I would. So don't tell me black people we need to just get over slavery. I'm sorry. Uh, to this day, uh, you have Jews that are hunting down collaborators. Uh, in Nazi Germany, that were part of that, that were actively instrumental in the Holocaust. So don't don't tell my people we need to get over slavery. But that's a whole other conversation. Again, I think this is a great book. Um, it lets you know all the key players. Um, I like how it outlined America's relationship with Israel because I think sometimes people, um, we kind of. Shoo shoo it! Oh yeah, we we're helping the, the Jews, but it's like this gave me a detailed understanding of how how we uh we trade intelligence with Israel. We give them we give them funding. Uh, Tel Aviv is is a, a technology epicenter. I mean, kind of like a, on some Silicon Valley type thing, like with uh, technology and intelligence. Um, the only thing I don't like, I, I me personally, I. I feel like we have a bias towards Israel, clearly. I don't know how much aid we really truly have given to the Palestinians. We've been a, a, we've, we've negotiated things, but I don't, again, I feel like the things that we've done has, have, to help the Palestinians has been very conditional. Um, but yeah, great book. Um, I definitely want to learn more about the, the, the conflict between the Palestinians and the Jews. Um, the Israeli and Palestinian conflict, rather. I want to learn more about it. Uh, this is a good starter piece, I think, for anyone. But yeah, uh, again, it, out, it gives the hist history of the land, the different conflict, the the, the organizations and, and people that are uh, involved in this whole scenario. Um, I like how it, I think it gave a very unbiased perception as far as why this land is valuable to both parties. It's the homie Mac. Thumbs up, give me the likes. Thumbs up, give me the likes. Each one, teach one. Peace and love. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict. A beginner's guide to objective understanding with fact-based journey from past to present. Um, written by, again, written by Peter Schwartz, Schwartzman. I'm trying to find a publisher. What's the, who's the publisher? Hmm. I don't, um, doesn't really list a publisher. This is made in the United States. <laughs> Um, but no, I, uh, again, I think this is a great book. It's, uh, it's compiled a lot of history into the, what, 100, 121, um, 122 pages in this book. Uh, I think it's worth the read. Check it out. Educate yourself. Each one, teach one. It's the homie Mac, man. I'm out. Peace.